Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Intel 13900KS. Now, uh, the 13900KS, if you've been living under a rock, is the first processor available from retail to do 6 gigahertz out of the box. Now what we do need to remember is the 6 gigahertz out of the box will only be up to a maximum of two cores. Um, and then uh, from my testing, all of my other cores sat at a maximum of 5.6 gigahertz and then the, uh, on the P cores. And then the E cores, they're around 4.3. If though you do load up all of the cores all at once, then they will all sit at 5.6. You only get that flick up to 6 gigahertz on the low loaded uh, um, uh, threads, games, benchmarks, no matter what you're doing. A lot of games now though do like a lot of threads though. So we did kind of witness that during gaming, it didn't hit 6 gigahertz a great deal and that will be reflected later on. Now, one of the things I do want to talk about straight away is temps and power draw. And in case you haven't worried, wondered what the noise is, it is all of the fans in the test rig, because I use a static test rig to uh, test all of the Z790, both boards and then uh, processors and it's this one with the H150i and all of the Corsair fans blowing an absolute hooli. Oh, and I just want to turn it off because in reality to be able to keep this thing in check, especially once you start doing anything of any particular load with it, you do need at least a 360 millimeter AIO and you are going to have to be careful with your fan curves and you are going to need def decent fans. In reality though, for this, I would say this is something that deserves, maybe not the right word, but requires dedicated water cooling and setting up correctly as well um, because it does get so very, very hot. Even though I have a 360 millimeter AIO and I can turn the fans on to 100%, I was still consistently getting at least four cores at 100 degrees. Now, you need to remember if they're all loaded up, they're only running at 5.6 at that point as well, but it was consistently at 100 degrees. Now, it was four cores and then I thought, oh, you've just not um, uh, mounted it properly. So I did my thermal tests probably half a dozen times in the end and it was always the same cause. So it has to be just the, an unfortunate thing with my IHS, maybe the way things are mounted and everything underneath. So I've got some very hot cores on this. I do think that uh, that's probably gonna be the same throughout unless you get incredibly lucky because we do need to remember the silicon lottery. Uh, now, what I did say about uh, gaming was that it didn't seem to make a great deal of difference with the majority of the games. Not a lot of difference anyway. And I think that's because a lot of the games now are, like I said, they're multi-threaded. They aren't going to be attaching to just one core or you're going to get cores bouncing all over the place. Now, I've done all of the things that I could do to tweak this and I say tweak this, I mean to set it up to try and give the system the best possibility of uh, latching itself onto those six scores. But maybe the games that we're using are just more multi-threaded. So a lot of the different, there wasn't a great deal of difference between this and the uh, 13900K. In reality, the place that we saw the difference between this and the 13900 was actually multi multi threaded stuff which based on what i've just said about the games doesn't seem to make a lot of difference but things like uh blender and cinebench for example were consistently quicker this was 10 seconds faster on our oc3d custom blender 4k run um than the old one it went from 220 something down to sorry 820 something down to uh, 811 I believe it was. You'll be able to see it in the graphs anyway. I actually have to memorize all this stuff. 
Anyway, it took 10 seconds off. Now this is a four million polygon, absolute bat, bat, um, poop cracker of a benchmark. And it's just our own one. And we use it because a lot of the uh, blender stuff that we get sent and asked to use, it's just over too quickly. Now that is great for if you're doing a lot of testing and you just want to get things run and in and out really quickly. But we use our 1080p result for that and we actually do like to stress things that little bit harder. Anyway, so multi-threaded stuff, definitely preferred things this more. And in reality, this does in, you know, that little bit more open up a bit of a gap between the 7950X from AMD. So Intel are doing quite well, but the power usage is just insane. Like it is nigh on, now bearing in mind, it is an entire system when we test because there's no real accurate way of being able to tell the CPU and we test them all in the same way. So we prefer just to say that entire system when the CPU was loaded up, it was pulling 590 watts. Now you can see what the AMD was pulling previously, and that is considerably less. You can also see that it's considerably less, sorry, considerably more, I will get my words out, the 13900K generic one was pulling considerably less than this. And that is because they've basically got a 320 watt power profile just for this, for it to be able to go into that crazy uh, six gigahertz mode. Uh, and it is just insane. Now, I did think that what they would do with this would be, they've quite clearly been speed binning the bejesus out of these. And by that, there's a thing called the silicon lottery where normally the silicon towards the middle of a die because they make a big disc of uh, processors and it's full of them. It's not just like one and that's one. There's literally, I'm not sure whether it's hundreds or thousands on a wafer. Let's say hundreds on a wafer. And normally the ones towards the middle are that little bit extra special compared to the ones on the outside. But, you know, that's just me very, very, being very sort of like blase with it. But what Intel do is they go through each of the processes to see which are their strongest points. And some of them get binned off slower down and they might become i5s or even i3s or like 13, 400s. And then the better ones work their way up. And then once you've got a big pile of 13,900KSs, you then might get some very special ones and they might go to overclockers or maybe even in a review pile. But with this, I'm not sure whether there was a voltage that I was missing or whether the um, MSI carbon wasn't quite up to the task or whether I'm just very limited with the uh, sample that I got uh, sent. And as I said to you, uh, at stock 5.6 was really easy um, although it was using a lot of volts and it was obviously getting hot but i was really struggling i was pushing to try and get 5.8 all core and i thought that was going to be a quite an easy task because in reality what i wanted to do was get six gigahertz all core now uh, I started at 1.3 volts and then went up to 1.4 volts and I didn't really get anywhere. So I ended up kind of going backwards and going, right, let's try and get 5.6 all core. <coughs> um, okay, and that wasn't too bad either. That was relatively easy. We already know it works anyway. And I was getting that at 1.275 volts. But 5.7 was a bit shaky. 5.8 just, just seemed to be a step too far. So I kind of suspect that there might be a weak core or two on here stopping me from getting that final jump because I could find stability in that benchmarks were running but they just and it wasn't causing blue screens when they were running it's pardon me 
I do apologise. I'm very hungry. They, uh, it, it was just, it got to the point where they were kind of telling me, yeah, no, we're not 100% happy here. So either I need to drop temperatures even further, which is not going to be easy with normal cooling. I think even water cooling might have been a bit too much of an ask. But I think we're either going to need loads more volts or to do some other work there. Now, I spent a whole afternoon messing around and playing with this uh, on Saturday just because I, <laughs> I actually do like overclocking and messing around. Uh, and I genuinely, genuinely wanted to be able to go, yep, six gigahertz, all core, bosh, done. And with this setup, cooling, had the air con on, the room was 16.2 degrees. It, I just couldn't get it happy. Like I said, even at 5.8. So I ended up being a fair bit disappointed. Now, I don't think you you're kind of gonna you're not gonna buy that and then it just expects six gigahertz all core anyway and it does do six gigahertz as it says out of the box without too much of a problem other than heat and noise which you have been pre-warned about but if you want to do anything else with it it is going to come down to the silicon lottery and i am going to go in a very very random tangent with this as well and that is it is marginally quicker yes but it's also a fair bit more expensive. I looked on scan just before I made the video and the original one was 580. This one is 700. I'm going to go and I am going to put it cat amongst the pigeons and say in the grand scheme of things, if you end up buying this, then I think it's going to cause you more hassle than it's going to solve. And I think I'd probably say go for the 13900K I think I'd also say that the extra money that you've saved, I'd either spend on cooling or graphics, one or the other. If you've already got a 4090, spend it on cooling. Maybe some better fans, fans that might not be as loud. You've got the Be Quiet uh, Pros is an option. You have the uh, Cooler Master Mobius fans. They're also great fans. You've also got like, there's a million and one Noctuas, but you've got the server fans that you can play around with and tune the fan speeds down. I personally think that if uh, it was me, I'm still a big fan of those Mobius fans because for 2000 RPM, they do exceptionally well and they're not as loud as you'd expect. They're a league better than we've been expecting from uh, Cooler Master for a long while. So I think I'd probably focus on cooling or graphics and stick with the old one. And that, in lie, leads me to where I am with this. That would be what I would do. But if you want it, then you are going to need to know that you are going to need decent cooling or you're going to go deaf. And I would genuinely, genuinely be keeping my eye on what happens with EK and that sort of stuff because you never know. A D-lid may be the answer to all your problems, both in cooling wise, but also noise and being able to live with it. And there you go. That is my review for the Intel 13900KS. It does do six gigahertz. I just wish that I'd managed to get more of the cores doing six gigahertz when it came to overclocking. Anyway, shock horror. This has been the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Ding. Love you, sis.